Hey everyone, welcome to episode 14 of this Outdoor Kitchen Project. I can't believe it's been actually over 14 weeks now because I skipped a week, uh, had some other things going on. But in this video, I get the backsplash completed. I get the columns uh, covered with ledger stone that hold up the center bar. Uh, and uh, I'll show you how I did all of that. So stay tuned. First here is how I did that area right behind the grill. I ended up making a template. I kind of copied the idea from the granite guy, made this template, laid it out on a piece of concrete board to make sure I had a long enough section of concrete board, and then uh, decided to use liquid nails because I didn't want it to be too brittle, uh, and I felt like if, if it wasn't slightly flexible when I put it into position, I could loosen up the tiles and they could potentially fall off. So what I did was uh, lay out two rows of stone with liquid nails. I let it set up overnight and I just made sure I exceeded the size of that template. Um, once that set up overnight, I'll show you what I did with it. But first, let me show you the completion of these two columns. For me and this project, this is the hardest work for me. I got It's up and down, up and down all day long. These two columns took all day. It's like doing a thousand squats and uh, it just really wears me out. I'm sore for days. But anyway, you'll see there what I'm filling in is just about a half inch gap on that one side. Unfortunately, I ended up with about a quarter inch gap on the other side because the floor is slanted. If I had planned a little better, I would have dropped the whole cabinet down uh, about a half inch and that would have ended up with no gap on one side and then about a half inch gap on the other side and it would have you know, probably just looked a little better. But I cut in all around that outlet and the gap on the uh, stone between the two slabs came out perfect. I'm really happy with the way this looks. All right, what I did was put it on this um, trolling motor box, which, by the way, that trolling motor right there, I'm going to replace. Uh, it's really, really old and it's on its last leg, so while they're still available, hello, Bella. While it's still available, I went ahead and bought one. And here I'm just using the box as kind of a sacrificial thing so that I can put the saw all the way down through it and uh, not mess up whatever's underneath. So, hey, box came in handy. Uh, so anyway, uh, I started on the ends after I clamped the whole thing in position and then just cut uh, all the way down the template. It worked out great. I would totally do this again if I needed to, you know, tile in a place that was either difficult or had a bunch of complicated cuts. I did actually see this on YouTube. I, I got the idea from the granite guys, like I mentioned, but what I saw on YouTube was this guy was putting tile down on a shower floor that was really complicated. There was a bunch of, of curves and, and uh, like a little nook back in the shower. So he just made a template of the whole thing, uh, laid out all of the tile squares on the floor, and then cut it out and when he uh, put it into position in the shower it was totally done uh, so I hadn't thought of that before I'll definitely do that again uh, and then I also went around the entire thing with the saw and cut it on I wouldn't say a 45 degree angle but I did angle it in because I didn't want the concrete board to touch the granite at all I wanted it to I want the, I wanted the stone to really sit as tight as it could on the granite I also mentioned that uh, it separated. That turned out to be, you know, totally fine. Worked out totally fine. And um, and then I did the same thing to the other side. Uh, you know, cut it on a 45 so it wouldn't hit the bottom of the granite. Only the stone would touch. I had to chip off a couple pieces of the stucco. I knew that it wouldn't lay flat. It didn't matter for the template. Uh, so in this one area, I probably saved a quarter inch of uh, overhang. You know, I created an additional over inch, uh, quarter inch of overhang by chipping that little piece off. Ideally, this overhang would have been an inch, which would have been the same as the rest of the granite, uh, but it's only about a half inch because of just the situation with uh, the back of the grill or the yeah the back of the grill lid hitting that granite slab I'm within a sixteenth of an inch uh, so I tried to position the camera in the best place for you to see all I did was drop it in place and um, on the right side it's a good inch and a half away from the stucco on the left side it actually touches the stucco so what I 
ended up doing, and I'll show you here in a minute when I move the camera, is just uh, piling up a bunch of mud on the right side and then uh, putting the sill back in place and then just pressing it in until I achieved that half inch between the two sides. I needed to, I, I, when I test fit it, I realized that I was still about an eighth of an inch too high and what I did was originally I had the travertine stones as spacers. I replaced it with concrete board and I mudded both sides of the concrete board. So there's, I don't know, maybe, maybe uh, eight or nine uh, little chunks of concrete board and the sill actually slopes down on that side. I don't know what the construction guys did. I mean, they just got really lazy in that corner, I guess. Uh, and it actually slopes down, so there's more mud down there uh, on both the backsplash and the sill. So I measured, I realized I had to pull it out just a little bit more and just really load that end up with mud. Uh, and when I was happy with where it was, uh, I went ahead and dropped the sill down and then I really had to shake the sill and uh, kind of grind it in to get it to, to get that mud to move around and get out of the way so that it would sit flat. And I mean, it just came out perfect. Uh, so you saw me there real quickly lay out all the stones. I try to lay out uh, stones when it's stuff like this so that you can choose where you want the colors to be. And... Um, I recommend always doing that, you know, lay out uh, at least some number of stones. Uh, but anyway, this is a no grout process. I was thinking about putting a 45 degree there, but nothing is 45. Everything has a rough edge. So I just wanted to stay consistent. And also what took additional time here is I did not want any pattern. I didn't want it to be brick laid. I wanted the pattern to be random because the ledger pattern is random. And I just wanted to stay with that random theme. I did plan this uh, for the top of the granite sill to be exactly two full tiles uh, so it would it would go seamlessly around the column and I ended up going uh, three up off the sill and five up off of the main granite countertop plus the little cap that I put on that gets me almost level with the top of the grill and I really thought about this a lot you know, it would probably look amazing if just that whole wall was stone, uh, but that is not something that I'm going to do right now. I want this project to be over, and uh, and I decided to just make it level with the top of the grill as, as close as I could within one full stone, and I think it turned out pretty nice. Over here, uh, if you look back in the corner and you remember from the plumbing video, unfortunately, those hot and cold supply lines come down the wall like that. I, I really wish they didn't do that. I wasn't going to cut the wall and recess them. Uh, I figured, you know, I, I just didn't want to take on that project. So unfortunately, it makes for this funny gap between the backsplash and the back wall. Uh, I did the best I could to keep it perfectly straight. And then I filled it with mud. So there's about a quarter to a half inch sill on top that is not covered by this little capstone that I made and I think I'll be able to correct it with paint and it'll just look fine but uh, we'll have to see I'll show you that uh, at the end of the video uh, anyway this is just called a pencil uh, pencil stone pencil something and it's uh, just the same type of travertine silver travertine it's got a little bit more brown in it which I actually like because the whole house scheme is this gray and brown uh, theme but um, but anyway, here you can see where I'm just filling that with mud, and then I do texture it up the wall a little bit, and uh, I think once it's painted, it's just it'll be fine. Uh, but I put that uh, those pencil stones on top of uh, all of the backsplash work, and then I did cut a 45 uh, on the corners. And this stuff is really easy to work with. Um, the 45s come together really nice. And uh, it turned out great. Uh, I, I'm just thrilled with the way it turned out. Here's a look at how this looks so far. I've got a bunch of tools over here, but 
you can see how the stone is starting to take shape. And here's the uh, view of the bar with the stones in place. And the backsplash it came out really nice. I need to paint this area here. I might have to texture it a little bit, but um, I went ahead and, and just made all the end stones along the sides of both sides. I thought about doing a 45 here, but nothing else is 45. I also made the pattern random, as you can see, because everything else is random. This area back here came out really nice. I did plan for two stones to be uh, perfectly level with the top here. I did that on purpose. And then over here, we've got uh, backsplash, this column, same random pattern, same end stone on the edge here, and then uh, just a small backsplash right along here. And because of these water pipes, the way they come down from the ceiling, which is really stupid, but uh, I wasn't going to fix it, I would have had to uh, cut them and run them down the wall after I cut the wall out and then restucco it just it just wasn't worth it so um, I had to position this backsplash about half inch to a quarter inch off of the wall that corrects for a dip in the wall the wall is not level uh, but mainly it just makes room for these pipes that are back there it's really unfortunate but I think once I paint this it'll look fine uh, you won't even notice and if you do I don't really care. I'm, uh, I'm just kind of over this area back in here. It's very functional. It's uh, You can get in there, you can get to the sink, you can turn the faucet on. Oop. There we go. You can turn the faucet on very easily without having to reach all the way back there. I have a soap dispenser to put back there, uh, but the whole area just works fine. So next up, oh, and I'll give you a close-up of this. Went ahead and wrapped the stone around the outlet and finished up the stone all in here. Came out really nice. I do have to uh, grind these edges. Uh, all the edges will be ground. I'll do that all at once at the very end to help them look more natural. And so far so good on this stainless steel foot rest. It seems to be in there really solid. Uh, nobody's knocked it off and quite a few people have put their feet on it already. So I'm feeling pretty good about it. Um, next thing I'll do is this same stone, same pattern, all around the inside of this small U shape. So this here, this little area, this small area around the uh, refrigerator, and then this panel right here. And I'll finish it right up to the edge just like this. And uh, that's it. Um, I'll go ahead and put some temporary concrete board here just so I know what uh, length to finish the stonework there. But that is uh, that and the ledger wall right over here will be the next work that I do. And then it kind of comes to a stop until I get the doors, which honestly I could use the break. I've got other projects that I want to do, uh, but um, that'll be a great stopping point. So. Anyway, that is it for this video. Try to get back without falling into the pool. Give you a view of what this is looking like. It's gonna look so good when this ledger stone is back. Uh, it's finished back here and then this is painted. Oops, I've got a pot rack that I'm gonna hang right here. Uh, so next video, rest of the stonework, painting, pot rack, uh, stainless steel shelf. I'll get all my, my pots out here uh, but from concept to at least the point that I'm at now, I'm, I'm really happy with the progress. I think it's looking pretty good. And I really can't wait until it's done. As always, thanks for watching. Really appreciate the views and the comments. And if you like this kind of content, please subscribe. But first, don't go because I have a few video clips here at the end. Uh, we rotisseried some chickens for the first time. Uh, this grill has a rotisserie that's actually mounted under, and in the last video I posted, I mentioned those racks 
go up. Uh, so check out this uh, steak video, me trying to figure out how to use a sear station uh, and rotisserie. We got a new visitor, a new snook the other night. Uh, it seems like we get a new snook every couple months. I, I don't know where they go. I hope they don't get caught, but, uh, but every couple months they seem to rotate off the lights. And if you want to see the installation of these lights, I'll put it right up here. And we found some bacon. This pig's name is actually Bacon. A uh, little girl pig, and the owner said it's just like having a dog. This is the farmer's market. We go every Saturday morning. Uh, it's huge. It's almost two full blocks of tents. Uh, the fruits and vegetables are definitely the main event, but there's all kinds of stuff here. They sell um, crafts and artwork and clothing. Uh, but uh, but we mostly go for the fruits and vegetables and we finally learned to quit buying more than we could eat in a week uh, it's just amazing how much better these fresh fruit, that corn was just amazing uh, there's prepared foods also as you can see and uh, there's usually some different uh, nationalities mixed in this is a, a Cuban tent that the food is just amazing uh, and of course my daughter found the book tent and uh, made a beeline for that there's usually a couple bands playing, or at least, you know, people singing or playing music. Uh, they have separated them. One is on one side and one's on the other. Here's the uh, steel drum guy uh, from from last weekend. But, uh, but anyway, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.